it go. Okay, so here we have on this model the heart. Coming off of the heart, we can see the aorta, the ascending aorta, and then the aortic arch. We can see the three branches off the aortic arch. We have the brachiocephalic artery, the left, sub, or left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. If we follow the brachiocephalic artery, we see it branches into the carotid artery and the subclavian artery. We also have this carotid artery and this subclavian artery. We follow the arteries into the arms, and we go from subclavian to axillary in the region of the armpit, to now brachial artery in the region of the upper arm. As we get down to the lower arm, we have here the radial artery on the thumb side and the ulnar artery on the baby finger side. We can follow these arteries down into the hand, and on this hand, we see the superficial palmar arch and the digital arteries radiating off. Now, if we jump over to the other hand, this flatter red line that we see is the deep palmar arch. So you can see them both, depending on which side you're on. If we go back now towards the heart, and I'll carry on the arteries, we can here see the descending abdominal aorta, because it's come underneath the diaphragm. We see the celiac trunk at the top, branching to form the gastric going up, splenic going to the left, and hepatic going to the right arteries. The next branch down we see is the superior mesenteric artery. We follow down a little further and we can see the renal arteries going to the kidneys. We then have the gonadal arteries, the inferior mesenteric artery branching forward, and then we're down to the leg region. We can see the common iliac arteries branching into the external iliac arteries and the internal iliac arteries which terminate very shortly. If we follow the leg down, we can see the femoral artery as we go through the leg. At the back of the knee, we have our popliteal artery. We then have our posterior tibial artery, which because this leg is turned sideways. Go to this leg, we can now see more properly our anterior tibial artery, because we can see the front of it here. If we go to the foot, we can see the arcuate artery arching across the top, and the metatarsal arteries radiating off. We'll head back to the heart now and pick up with the veins. So here we have our superior vena cava <laughs> branching into our brachiocephalic veins. Each of the brachiocephalic veins then branch off into the jugular veins going up to the head and the subclavian veins going out to the arm. We follow this vein over, we see subclavian, axillary, brachial veins. We then get into the arm and we have the cephalic vein on the outer sweep of the upper arm, the basilic vein on the inside sweep of the upper arm, the median cubital in the crossover, we then have the radial vein and the ulnar vein in the lower arms. If we go back now towards the heart, we have our inferior vena cava coming up from the bottom. We can nicely see the hepatic veins on this particular model, which were not visible on our torso. We can see the renal veins going out towards the kidney. We follow the veins down. And once again, we get to our common iliac veins, our external iliac veins going forward and our internal iliac veins, which terminate almost immediately after we first see them. Now the other veins get a little bit awkward as we get down into the leg here. We can see the femoral vein, which is the main vein going down into the leg here. We can also see the um, great saphenous vein coming down the inside sweep of the leg. You can see a little bit of small saphenous vein over here, but the connection is relatively vague, so I don't think we would test on that. I think that's it.